you know, I, I don't think there are a whole lot of people who are going to stand up and make the argument that we're getting better connected to one another. We're experiencing this weird juxtaposition between this sense that we're coming together in all these public platforms, you know, social media, the web, that, that these are somehow bringing us into a shared experience of reality. And um, I think the true reality is that that's as fragmented or more fragmented as uh, just about anything we've experienced. There's that kind of impulse colliding with a sort of a uh, more local version of that that we've experienced here in Beaver County. You know, uh, we've been experiencing um, a lack of regional identity for, for a long time. The 2020 has been crazy. And as things have spun out of control, I think we've realized more and more how critically important relationships are. It's all about listening to one another. Trying things without feeling certain that you know exactly how to finish the job. Learning along the way um, and prioritizing more than anything else, uh, you know, the well-being of our community. In that season, I think it's been really powerful for us to reflect on what's, what's left, uh, what's enduring, and, and how much of that is connected to what we're trying to do here at Riverwise. If you know anything about history, you know that we've gone through cycles of tremendous upheaval. And out of one of those cycles, FDR, uh, introduced something called the Civilian Conservation Corps. You know, this was a, an initiative that put unemployed folks to work uh, around the country on social benefit projects, projects that were, you know, of use to the American people. We are planning within a few days to ask the Congress for legislation to enable the government to undertake public works thus stimulating directly and indirectly the employment of many others in well-considered projects. They built dams and they built bridges and they built parks and they weren't paid crazy for it, um, but they got up every day and they had meaning and purpose in a time where that was fleeting for many. You know, out of that uh, emerged this idea called the Community Builder Corps. The Community Builder Corps is a pretty simple concept. You know, we wanted to identify residents or organizations in Beaver County, uh, put them to work for three months at a time, and engage them in community building kinds of projects. So we're kind of metering out the compost a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're just trying to increase the fertility here because uh, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and laying it directly on the bed gives us something, uh, a good surface to plant into. Uh, it also lets us just apply compost where we need it rather than throwing it all over the whole garden. Uh, and then it's fertilizing your weeds as well as your vegetable plants. So The food insecurity issue popped up and we said, hey, let's figure out how to plant a garden. And we pretty quickly assembled a team of people who could you know, give us the confidence to, to move forward with the project. You know, Jeff Karwaski uh, had had relatively little exposure to Riverwise. You know, he's into reforesting. He said, I need your help. And he said, when do you need me to be there? And he showed up with his tractor and my buddy Michael Witterman came over and he let us borrow his bobcat for the day. And people showed up and said, I don't have a bobcat, but I can run a shovel. We have the best partner ever in this work in Crop and Kettle, based out of Ambridge. Uh, Crop and Kettle stepped up. I can't say enough about Tim and Dave. At the heart of Crop and Kettle is to be able to show people that they have value and they have purpose. And 
Um, we are showing them a functional skill along the way, but the heart of what we want to do is show people that, that God created them on purpose, in purpose, for a purpose. And so we're officially contracted to, to manage this garden. Uh, it will uh, end up being a part of our curriculum. The produce will uh, most likely be a mix of going towards our programming, so be used in our kitchens as well as being donated to um, local families. But we've only been working here barely a week. Uh, and so, uh, so tonight is um, really just kind of the groundbreaking, so doing, doing the work that's gonna let us grow veggies here. People came together and they said, uh, let me do what I can do. And you know, those kinds of things, um, you know, on the one hand they seem small, but in this season it's like, we realize how incredibly important they are. One way that I think Riverwise has been fairly unique uh, is in our commitment to storytelling. When COVID hit, we thought, man, there's just so many important stories that are happening here and our residents can't see that happening. And along the way, we started to realize that there was a way of developing community and telling story in concert with one another. And so we partnered with Chris Paget from Human City Creative Aaron Neinhauser from Rust Belt Mayberry Photography, and Kevin Farkas from The Social Voice Project. And they started telling stories about residents of Beaver County who are responding to the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we call them the helpers. And they're just beautiful pictures of uh, documenting what's been happening in this season but really shedding light on the beautiful human element uh, of this crisis. The immediate thought was, how is this gonna affect people who are dealing with drug and alcohol concerns? How is this gonna affect people who have a lot of anxiety already? I mean, it was the immediate question, the immediate, the first meeting was, um, how can we reach out to every family that we're involved with? I mean, I think that trails, trails shines in times like this. We're gonna jump into the trenches with all of our strength, with all of our resources, all hands on deck, checking in with everyone we know and find out what they need and, and start from there. Through this um, extremely stressful time for families and with the help of our volunteers, we're gonna do everything possible that we can to keep serving everyone. But, Keep looking up. This is going to end. It's important for this world, for the world I'm a part of, I'm living in, to restore hope in people. Literally, like, we are all affected by each other, you know? I don't, I think there's a switch broken in me. Like, I care. <laughs> yeah, there's a switch broken. Like, I, I care, and then I still keep moving forward to try to do something, and I don't know why. This is, I think, the way that I was made. I, I believe I was made to help others, and this lets me use that gift. I always think that, um, <sighs> that we should be kind to one another, and we should not judge people because they need help. I think in today's world, everything is so impersonal and uh, disconnected. I mean, it is about community because if we're separate, and that goes for every every community, every town, every every country, we need each other. And if we forget that, I feel. I mean, I feel sorry for someone who doesn't recognize the connectedness that it that is between one another, each other. Uh, you know, because life is a long journey. Ser you know, it's serpentines and there are peaks and, and valleys and, and, you know, 
You want to share the joys, but you want to lessen the hard falls. I think of some of the folks who are featured in a lot of these videos. I mean, these aren't young people, right? These are people who any physician would identify as higher risk, if not the highest risk um, demographic. And it just didn't matter. They just got to work and they loved others and they sacrificed their time and, and potentially their health. And um, relentless, I just, I mean, relentless. What a beautiful legacy out of this, this crazy chaos. So much of Beaver County's story is sort of just under the surface. I think we would be wise to, to elevate some of that more than we do. Out of that project, we've actually spawned what will hopefully be a whole new initiative called the Genesis Collective. And this is kind of taking that original idea and, and thinking about what it would look like to, to foreground the role of the artist as a centerpiece of social movement. There's tremendous opportunity to get beyond sound bites when you invest in artists and you empower them to do what they do, which is listen and create. When I did the COVID project, I tried to stay as positive as I could. You know, I didn't want to show any kind of images of people being sick or, you know, you know, or dying or nothing like that. So I tried to keep it upbeat and try to show, you know, uplifting a little bit. And I wanted to be broad. I didn't want it to, I didn't want to put any name on it. I just wanted to, like I said, for anybody in the world to be able to look at it. So the piece is titled Avalanche. There are people on the front lines, in this case, a black woman, she has her mask on. Her arms are outstretched like this because she's trying to hold everything up. Local issues, then the national issues, and then the global issues at the top. All of these things are connected. They're impacting each other, right? And that is essentially what is happening in our communities right now. You know, at the, at the very top above the rocks, I wanted to have some sort of lighter, softer color and a little bit of greenery that's like, okay, the sun is getting ready to rise. We're not gonna look back and just continue as things were. There has to be something new that's coming. In the artwork that I create or that other people create, that is more of that, you know, like, wow, this is hard to look at, or it's really painful, or it makes me, you know, sad. I do believe that that sometimes is the first step in the healing process, is like confronting that anger and sadness and all of those things first, and you trigger all of that so that you can move past it. Hopefully people start you know, liking each other more and, and being able to, to be able to talk more and be able to you know, communicate. So that, that that's the most thing, most, you know, that's the most important thing. If you take your time to learn and listen to different people, you can learn something instead of just putting your shields up and not, you know, wanting to learn something or see something. We know that there's this global reckoning around race and really trying to understand as a people, um, what stories we want to tell about ourselves and about our past. We're working with uh, a teacher from Baden Academy Charter School by the name of Kanisha Page. Basically, I'm doing research and meeting with different people um, just to learn more about our area and uh, how the slaves traveled the Underground Railroad and how they made it to our area, the different safe houses in our area, and then how they continued to migrate to Canada. You know, when I was younger, I didn't know any of this, you know? You'd hear bits and pieces, you'd hear about um, famous African-Americans, but you didn't really know um, their struggle and what they went through and how they traveled. And to know that where you live, our community was a huge part of that. 
you know, how do you not share that? How is that not exposed? How is, how is that not a part of the curriculum? Instead of just learning history just as history, you want to be able to relate to it some way, somehow. So that's my goal is to, to embed that, um, that history into the schools. Uh, relatively early in the summer, we connected with Neighborhood North Museum of Play. They were doing a, a series of tutoring sessions with youth from Beaver Falls, making sure that they were keeping up over the summer. Uh, we got behind that initiative and were able to support them financially. Uh, Riverwise didn't do any tutoring. Neighborhood North conceptualized everything. They did all the hard work. We were just able to help resource that. Again, another example of, of, of layered resourcing of relatively simple interventions. One of the ideas that we had with the Community Builder Corps is to lean into census awareness and activation. The Pittsburgh Foundation put out a call for some very small awards. Uh, we had four different organizations in Beaver County go after those awards, and we coordinated our activity. Emily Marco created this one-page flyer. We've been able to hand these out to the public, raise awareness. Chris Padgett created an explainer video. We brought in Rochelle from Trails Ministry. She even got illustrated in this thing. And it's just a really, a really cool example of what it looks like for organizations to work together toward a common cause with relatively small investment of time, energy, and resources. But when you aggregate all of those, we have a tremendous effect. All it takes is five minutes. And we can benefit our community for the next 10 years and beyond. We are Beaver County and we deserve to be counted. We're also on the front end of a partnership with a handful of organizations. The Beaver County Partnership is convening a community listening series around the topic of resilience. And we wanna have a series of three different conversations. Uh, one about resilience gaps in the nonprofit sector, another about resilience gaps in municipal government, and a third about resilience gaps in the business sector. All of this we hope will come together and provide insight into some of what's happening in Beaver County across these sectors uh, give us a better, a better idea of how to respond in, in the coming months. You know, when something like a global pandemic comes by, you know, every hundred or so years, I guess you, you really have to step back and ask yourself, who are we? You know, what are we trying to do here? And, you know, at some point relatively quickly, it didn't feel super quick at the time, but at some point, you know, it occurred to me that Everything's changed and nothing's really that different. You know, at the core of what we're trying to do is bring people together to see themselves as part of something larger that acts in service to those around us. And gosh, if we can't be doing that work in a season of global upheaval, then we probably shouldn't be doing that work. And we started to think about what would it look like if this region became a model of how to foreground relationships and respectful communication as, as the hallmark of any and everything we do together? You know, if we came together and genuinely wanted to know and understand those who had different experiences from us, who saw the world differently, um, you know, if we, if we worked arm in arm to do that and to create those competencies in our organizations, in our kids, you know, in ourselves. Um, man, that would blow the cover off of everything we're trying to do in this region. Um, we're, we're leveling up our humanity as a way of growing our community. Um, man, if we could wrap our head around that, um, there's nothing that we couldn't accomplish. It doesn't get done with a program. You know, it doesn't get done in a summer. It doesn't get done probably in a decade, you know, uh, community gets forged over lifetimes. And uh, I think that's, that's what I envision our calling being here in Beaver County is digging in, uh, committing ourselves to the long haul and, you know, really asking ourselves what it means to, to create this future together.